I said it before, Africa has much more a political importance to China than an economic importance. Um, because when you look at the trade numbers, when you look at what uh, Africa represents in terms of China trade in the world, we are very among the last among the last partners of China as a continent. So is the new world order, is the new approach of China in the global order, does it have does it has a place? for us as Africa, as continent? Does it offer us an opportunity to be an actor, not only a pawn in a great power competition? Because China wants to show the rest of the world in that context where there is a rivalry with the West, with the US, with Europe, China wants to show the world that Africa still stands firmly and collectively behind China and Africa sees, still sees China as an important ally. But if they don't show up, if they're not present, the Chinese diplomacy might be worried about that. Hello, welcome back for another video of China in Africa debates. My name is Christian Geronema. I'm the Africa editor of the China Global South Project, an online media that covers China engagement and involvement in the Global South. What China does in terms of politics, economy, investment in the Global South, we cover it all and we talk about all different topics in different videos and content that we produce in the China Global South Project. We have our content made in French, in English, in Arabic. In our website that appears online here, you're going to see all our content. And if you want to know more about what we do, please go on our website, visit the content. And if you like it, don't hesitate to put your email address. You're going to be receiving newsletter that we produce twice a week. In French, we do that every Tuesday and every Friday. It's for free. But in English, we do produce it daily, but it's yeah, it's paid and you're going to have to pay it's just a bit of uh, a bit of money to get the amazing content that the China in the Global South project produce. We are a team based in Africa, in different parts in Africa, in Asia, and we are now expanding in Latin America and we also in the Middle East. So if you want to really keep updates on what China is doing in the Global South, the China Global South project is the media for you, is the place for you to come and learn and know exactly what China does in the global south. So let's dive back in our conversation today of the China in Africa debate. It's been a while. I haven't been online. I haven't posted. I've been do I was doing other content for the China Global South. Still, we are producing different kind of video. But the China Africa debate, I haven't done it in a while. So I'm coming back to you to talk about a different topic, not a different topic, that's a, another topic of China and Africa. And it's a very important one because it's a topic that we tend to follow closely. And that's kind of come every three years in the China Africa story. It's been happening since the year 2000. And this year, we're going to see it again happening in late, late this year in China. For those who have guessed this, is the China Africa conference cooperation called shortly FOCAC. The announcement has been made a few, a few days ago, it actually on March 7th, during a press conference by Chinese Foreign Affairs Ministry, Foreign Affairs Ministry Wang Yi, when he was responding to a question that was asked um, by a journalist um, about China-Africa relation, he announced that we're going to have the FOCAC this year, it's going to be held in Beijing. And by the looks of his answer, we're going, it's going to be a presidential summit. The FOCAC since the year 2000, it happens either as a ministerial conference or either a presidential summit. So we had much more ministerial conference than a presidential summit. The last one in 2021 that happened in Senegal, it was a kind of an hybrid one because we had uh, some head of state that were present in Senegal, some of, some of them were not, but the Chinese president was not there. It was he was back in Beijing at that time. Xi Jinping could not move because of the COVID situation in China and all over the world. So in 2021, in November, in Senegal, it was a presidential summit. So this year, the end of 2024, we still don't have the exact date yet, but it should happen around October, November, December, because this is actually the time it, it does. It usually happens. So it's going to happen in Beijing. 
the summit's going to be an important one because it's happening in a moment where two things major happen in China poli in, in, in China politics and China foreign affairs relation. The first thing, the BRICS expanded. Now the BRICS has new three new uh, has six new members. Among them, we have. Um, we have uh, Egypt, we have Ethiopia, and we have South Africa, which was there already. But it means that we have three African countries in the BRICS uh, in, 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 in the BRICS Association. But the also second point that's happened is the fact that no, the BRI has changed. Last year, in October 2023, we had the 10th anniversary of the Belt and Road Initiative. That one we call the Belt and Road 2.0, depending on the expert and those been following. It's because China has changed its approach in terms of BRICS. Now we are talking about the small and beautiful, smart and beautiful, where China is not lending as much as money it used to do before, and where it's not, you know, you know, just giving money as uh, it, it they, as we as we know China w was doing before and uh, financing big infrastructure. China has changed. Now we have the new China. Its new approach for small and beautiful, or smart and beautiful, and the BRICS uh, configuration that's has changed as well and this is the summit will this is the summit where the chinese on the chinese side it will be the opportunity to assure the african head of state that you know china still uh, still see africa as relevant for for china africa is still an important partner and uh, it's very the fact that we are changing in our approach in, in africa with the fact that we are not even we are not lending as much as money we used to do before doesn't mean that we lose interest in africa talking about lending last week there was a report that was and that there, there was an article that came up from um, a chinese uh, a chinese media so i'm going to put the link here so you're going to see the article it's written in in chinese but you can translate it in Google Translate, where Bank of China, not to be confused with People's Bank of China, which is the central bank, but Bank of China is not interested in lending money in Africa anymore. And it's very interesting because Bank of China has been among the banks that has been lending money through different part, through different companies, uh, state-owned company of private Chinese company involved in uh, in infrastructure and different projects in Africa. So Bank of China is not lending money in Africa anymore. So just that tells you the sentiment, the feeling that's happening right now in Beijing about the African condition. So the BRICS, this, not the BRICS, but the FOCAC summit this year will be the opportunity for Chinese president to try to reassure its counterpart in Africa that despite the new configuration, we still value Africa. Africa is still important to us under the new condition. And uh, the condition is, it, it, it will also be an opportunity for Africa to, to see how we are going to approach China in this new configuration. For those who've been following the news, you know that China is going through a difficult economic situation where, you know, China is not lending money, as I said before, and the economic, the economic slowdown in China is expected maybe to, to last a bit longer than we expected. The IMF has made projection that it may last until next year, maybe the year after that, we still don't know. So when you take all those situations, the question will become how Africa that has been that's been used to receive Chinese money for which China was an alternative when other uh, other uh, founders, uh, other World Bank, IMF and private private creditors in the West were not lending money in Africa. China was there to lend money to African country. But now that's not happening what will happen to our relationship with China and in Africa? And this is going to be one of the main questions I do believe that's, that's going to be part of this conversation during the FOCAC that's going to happen. So it's also, as I say, in terms of opportunities, it will be an opportunities as well for Africa to redefine its relationship with China, to understand where are we going from here? We used to we used to have you as the one who's going to who, who used to give us money. That since you're not giving us money anymore, where are we going? I think I've mentioned it before, and then for those who've been following us, I've been I told it I, I said it before. Africa has much more a political importance to China than an economic importance. Um, because when you look at the trade numbers, when you look at what uh, Africa represents in terms of China trade. In the world, we are very among the last among the last partners of China as a continent. So that tells you that in terms of economic importance, despite huge um, Chinese interest, uh, mining interest in the DRC in Zimbabwe, in Namibia, 
as a whole, Africa still remain a very, I'd say, a, a very small actor, a very small partner for China in, term, in, in terms of economic engagement. So when you have that in mind, you also know that Africa is much more important to China in terms of political alliance, because Chai Africa, African countries have been consistently and systematically voting toward China's position in different instances, in different in different international institutions, being the Security Council, being the Human Rights Council, being different 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 institutions, African countries have the tendency to vote for China's position. That's being Uyghur position, Hong Kong position, and all the different positions. African has been kind have been quite consistent on that. So this is one of the main value of Africa in that context of China, where Africa is a political alliance, is a political ally for China, and this is how for China Africa is important. So in that new configuration, the question becomes: how do we as Africa, how do we place ourselves in that situation? Because I do I, I'm quite convinced that few of the issues that China is going to bring up on the table during this FOCAC is going to bring up different initiatives has been put in place. The Global Security Initiative, GSI, the Global Development Initiative, GDI, the Global Civilization Initiative that has been put in place where China has been advocating for the singularity of development path that each country needs to take, that there's no universal path that every country needs to take, that each country has its own path, its own history, its own uh, its own perspective to development, and that should be promoted and not one single view, one single perspective where one country or one part of the world should impose to the remaining of the world what and how development should happen. So China has been advocating for that. And many African countries, as well as intellectual, have also been advocating for that. But we also have that China wants to reshape the international order. China has been calling for that, calling for new world order, the re the reform on the Security Council for much more multilateralism than that, that what we see right now, to have different center of power in the world. And to do that, China needs support, needs international ally. And Africa is one of China's main important ally in that regard. That that was true, and that is still true. And that was relevant for, that also it was quite automatic for many African countries, as long as China was giving money for them to finance different projects and everything. But now China is not doing that. The question becomes, what might make African to still lean toward China? Especially if China is not giving money anymore, if they can find financing anywhere else, what will really keep African country to keep on voting for China. And I do believe that might be one of the issues that the Chinese diplomacy will be looking at closely in the upcoming forecast to see how many African head of state will be coming, will be present physically in the conference. Because if out of 53 minus Eswatini that still recognize Taiwan as a country, if out of 53 we have like, I don't know, only 20 or only 18 head of state being present, for the Chinese diplomacy, that won't look good because China wants to show the rest of the world in that context where there is a rivalry with the West, with the US, with Europe. China wants to show the world that Africa still stands firmly and collectively behind China and Africa sees, still sees China as an important ally. But if they don't show up, if they're not present, the Chinese diplomacy might be worried about that. But if they show up in bulk, if you have like 38 of state or 48 of states, that will surely be a diplomatic victory for China to show the rest of the world that, you know, I'm the only country in those Africa Plus One Summit that's able to really get to 48 of state or 30 and more head of state from Africa being present and talk to me. And for me, it's very important. So for China, it's going to be very important because they're going to look closely and pay attention how many head of state of Africa will be there. So when you take that into account, the question now becomes for Africa, how do you take advantage? Because... In that situation where China is looking at to change the world system, to change, to reshape the world order, the question becomes, the Africa question should be, 
where is our place there? Where do we stand there? Where do we sit there? Do we have a seat, a permanent seat on the Security Council? By the way, South Africa has been advocating for Africa here to have a permanent seat on the Security Council, and Africa is still going to have to 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 kind of make up his mind about who's, which country is going to represent. But that's the question anyway. But do we have? our place a permanent seat on the Security Council, beyond the, UN, the, the, the UN Security Council, on different parts, in different institutions, where will be, where we will be our seats as Africa? Where do we stand? Is the new world order, is the new approach of China in the global order, does it have, does it has a place for us as Africa, as continent? Does it offer us an opportunity to be an actor not only a pawn in a great power competition. That will be one of the questions that many African heads of state will have to ask. Beyond asking it bilaterally or as a single country, I do believe that Africa as a continent should really take advantage to think of it as a collective issue and to think of how are we going to address that problem. So that, I think, needs to be addressed by many African countries, despite everything else, despite looking for money, expecting to still receive billions from, from China. I don't say it. I did, I, I'm not saying that those billions will not come because they're still going to come. Because when you look at what China has promised, um, not China, has, no, what China has promised a few, uh, few months back about the Tazara, where they're going to invest $1 billion in revamping the Tazara Railway, from Tanzania to from Zambia to Tanzania to Port of Dar es Salaam, we can still that it's still relevant to China being present in that space. It's still relevant, especially when you do know and see that the U.S. and Europe are investing massively in the Lobito corridor. I'm gonna make I'm gonna be covering a different story on that. I think I've covered that before, but I'm gonna I'm gonna cover it on different angle to talk about that, that story. But anyway, so China is still gonna be present in that space, but but not as much as we used to see it before being present in Africa. So when you take all those elements on the table, you're gonna realize that this focus is going to be really interesting to see. It's going to really be interesting to follow into the details, to pay attention on how Africa intends to play. It's called right. The focus, this focus is, is also going to be an opportunity to realize that China's commitment three years ago did not materialize because in November 2021, China made a promise that we know we're going to increase our imports from Africa to $300 billion a year. But the last number in 2023, China imports from Africa were standing at $181 billion if I remember correctly. Uh, but uh, if I'm making a mistake, I'm going to correct the number here. You're going to see the correct number. But we are still way far off for what China is and was as promised to Africa in terms of import. And it's also far from what... Um, uh, what China, uh, the, the the impact of China's measure in terms of uh, alleviating many African um, uh, duties to China in terms of in the export to China. I've made a video already about that, about China-Africa trade numbers. You can, you can find it here. You're going to see much more details on that. But anyway, so the FOCAC will be the opportunity to talk about these issues as well. So as I was saying earlier, this focus will be an historical one. I do believe that if Africa, if if Africa as a continent and different African country comes with come with a very coherent and solid agenda that can take a lot as as a lot as much as they can from this focus, because as much as China has pulled away from big infrastructure, China is still relevant into in, uh, investing in ICT trans uh, in ICT new technology where we see China building data center all over the continent being you know present in the internet and uh, and and all those ICT domain we also see China being present on different spaces related to energy new uh, renewable energy into transport so i think that we might need africa might need to also move its agenda its to those kind of area to try to find as much as opportunity for Chinese investment in that space as well. So yes, this focus, as 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 I said, it's going to be really very much interesting. But I think African countries should take the opportunity to question China and to think that where are we going from here? 
things have changed. The way you approach us has changed. And it's not to say that it's China's fault, because the reality is when you look at the economic situation of many African countries up to today, many of them are still in the situation. They, they have not made the required changes for them to be sustainable partner financially. They have not made the structural changes that allow them to be able to take on loans, massive loans, and being able to repay them. So I think that China just opened up his, its eyes and kind of understood that Africa is still not ready for those kind of commitment. And they now should be much more careful about how much money they're lending to Africa and they don't put themselves into risk of, you know, putting finding themselves with the defaulting country like Zambia is fighting itself in the current situation. So this beyond, beyond that, beyond that, the question becomes, yes, in that new relationship with China, with Africa, where us Africa do we stand? Where do we go from here? And I do believe that this FOCAC, this coming FOCAC in 2024 this year will be and must be the opportunity for Africa to ask the tough questions and to really plan the future of the new China in Africa relationship. So that was all for me. And um, um, it was really my pleasure to give you this, uh, this coverage of China in Africa debates and tell to talk to you about the FOCAC. And uh, if you like the content, if you like what you've pre what you've heard, what you've just seen, click the subscribe button and also click the ring bell. So every time I drop a new video, you'll be aware of what we have dropped. You're going to be seeing different kind of video coming either from me, my different colleagues, the, Ch the, Ch the, the China Global South Roundtable. Those who've been following, you know, what is it about? Our conversation with our experts on different issues. So the China Global South Project, as I was saying earlier, it's there to provide you as much as comprehensive and extensive coverage and analysis and different content about China engagement in the Global South. So that was all for me. And I'm gonna see you next week for another video of China in the Global South. Bye-bye.